Hi everyone and welcome to the Leaving Cert Chemistry channel with myself Emma Ronan, creator and owner of leavingcertchemistry.ie. Head on over to that website if you want any of the notes that I discuss in this video or follow us on TikTok at leavingcertchemistry.ie and Instagram and also over on Spotify where we have completely free Leaving Cert Chemistry episodes on every single topic that you need to know for your Leaving Cert Chemistry exam with helpful exam tips, tricks, exam structure and timing and so much more. So you can visit us on any of those platforms but for our very first video we are going to look at all things history of the atom. Probably one of the most theory heavy chapters without much experiments but we still can shorten it and condense it down. So let's have a look. So the history of the atom began with Greek philosophers and next came John Dalton in 1808. While you will never be asked explicitly for the dates, it is handy if they give them to you in an exam to recognise them. So John Dalton was an English chemist who first summarised matter, and he did so in his atomic theory. So all matter is made up of very small particles called atoms. Atoms are indivisible, and this means that they cannot be broken down into anything simpler by chemical means. Okay, so then we have William Crookes, and William Crookes followed on from Dalton. He discovered what is called cathode rays. Definition here for cathode rays, they are negatively charged streams of particles, which we now call electrons. However, the word electrons hasn't been discovered at the time, so Crookes referred to these streams of particles as cathode rays. Crookes then went on to do experiments to discover the properties of cathode rays. Remember, streams of negatively charged particles. So his first experiment is going to be talking all about the Maltese cross. So he got a vacuum tube, in other words, a tube at low pressure so that the air particles didn't interfere with his experiment. He connected a battery to the vacuum tube, placed a Maltese cross in the center, and he discovered that cathode rays are invisible. They travel in straight lines. When they hit glass, they cause it to fluoresce or glow. And the shadow of the Maltese cross was cast at the back of the vacuum tube as the cathode rays could not travel through it. Cathode rays travel from the negative terminal known as the cathode towards the positive terminal of a battery known as the anode. Next, he replaced the Maltese cross with a paddle wheel and he saw that the paddle wheel moved in the direction of the anode. Cathode rays have enough energy to cause the paddle wheel to move and they move in the direction of the positive terminal, as I said, in the direction of the anode. Next, we move on to JJ Thompson and he focused cathode rays by passing them through a small hole in the positive electrode no charge meant that the cathode rays traveled straight through, again, causing the glass to fluoresce. However, then he put metal charged plates, positive above, negative below, and he discovered that the cathode rays were deflected towards the positive plate. So Thompson said that the particles must be negatively charged as they deflected from the negative plate and towards the positive plate. We know in chemistry that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. Thomson found the charge to mass ratio of the electron. He did not find the charge of the electron itself, nor the mass of the electron. He discovered the ratio only. Following on from Thomson, we have George Stoney, who actually named the cathode rays as what we refer to them nowadays, named them as the electron. Next, we have Robert Millikan and his oil drop experiment. So he set up an experiment to measure the charge of an electron. He ionized the air using X-rays, meaning the air molecules lost electrons and became ions. He sprayed tiny drops of oil between two charged plates. As the oil droplets fell, they picked up the electrons and became negatively charged. Next, then Millikan adjusted the charges on the plate, so positive and negative plate, until the oil droplets suspended mid-air. He discovered the actual charge of the electron to be 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now we're going to go back to JJ Thompson and his plum pudding model. So JJ Thompson came up with this model of what he thought the atom looked like. So he stated that an atom is like a positive sphere with electrons embedded in it at random. His image of an atom was accepted for a long period of time before Rutherford came along. Speaking of Rutherford, we are going to move on to him next. So Ernest Rutherford is going to introduce what we call alpha particles. So what he did was he discovered the nucleus in 1909. He bombarded a thin sheet of gold foil with positively charged particles known as alpha particles. And from the for this experiment, you are expected to know the results that Rutherford got, as well as the conclusions that he made from his results and observations. Okay, so let's talk about the observations and the results. So the results, most alpha particles went straight through the gold foil with no deflection. Some alpha particles were deflected at large angles and a very small amount of alpha particles came straight back along their own original path. 
So from this, Rutherford had to come up with some conclusions. The most alpha particles going straight through the gold foil with no deflection, he concluded that most of the atom was made up of empty space. The alpha particles being deflected at large angles meant that they were repelled when they passed near the positively charged nucleus and a tiny amount being deflected back along their own path meant that the alpha particles must have collided head on with the nucleus. So Rutherford then concluded that the core of the nucleus contained positive particles called protons. And Rutherford later concluded that electrons were outside of the nucleus in some sort of an electron cloud, which you will revisit in the arrangement of the electrons chapter. So that's Ernest Rutherford and James Chadwick, our next scientist, is going to continue on from Rutherford. He replaced the gold foil with beryllium and bombarded alpha particles at the beryllium while keeping a paraffin wax block behind the apparatus. He noticed that there was another neutral particle hitting the paraffin wax block. This didn't happen with the gold foil because gold foil atoms are heavier than beryllium atoms. Neutrons were difficult to detect and James Chadwick came up with the name for them. Our summary, protons are positive, relative mass 1 amu, location nucleus, neutrons in the nucleus 1 amu, neutral charge, electrons minus 1 charge, the mass 1 over 1838 and located outside of the nucleus in some sort of an electron cloud. Don't forget this is only the first of the atom chapters. Our next one is going to be arrangement of electrons in the atom. Here's a recap of what you want to know. If you want notes, booklets on any of these, head over to www.leavingsarchemistry.ie and make sure you follow me on TikTok and Instagram where I talk in length of tips and tricks and summaries of chapters that you need to know. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe and hit the like.